430 horsepower engine inside of it, okay? And it has our same mold technology that's on our smaller machines, the 90 series and the 60 series. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same mold. The only difference in the machines is the uh, frame structures are bigger and uh, more robust the bigger the machine gets. This plow system is the same plow system that's on our SP90 series machines. So it's proven technology. It's nothing new to this market. For transport, this machine is 11 and a, or sorry, 12 and a half feet wide mm -hmm. without having to take anything off. So we have these folding gates to help you with transport to get your narrow width. No need for the wrench. Yeah, no need for a wrench. So you lock them in, you use them, you, you're, at, you're done using them, you put them into transport stowed mode, pin them back. Mm -hmm. So so when you're paving these are open. This is open-ended metering gates. This was done for transport. Uh, the open-ended metering gates allow fresh concrete to flow through the side. So when we were talking about having soft edges out on a military base job, mm -hmm. you would like to use your plow to push the good fresh concrete right over here to the edge because you're gonna have heavy aggregate. You stuff the edge with the heavy aggregate and you don't get a lot of cream in it. Mm -hmm. If you had a closed off uh, metering gate, then you would have a lot of excess grout in the grout box. And if you didn't pay attention to your concrete height inside there, then you could end up with an edge that was more grout than more aggregate. So this helps maintain that. Uh, we use a minute vibrator, same as the competition. We have a grout box auger and a tamper bar mm -hmm. inside there. Um, I'll tell you that you can use this machine on 90% of your mixed designs without either one of those two features, but on really coarse aggregate mixes, large, large aggregate, it helps to have the tamper bar. Mm -hmm. And if, if your preference of choice for mixing concrete, giving it a little wake up every day while you're paving, you have the grout box auger. But with the control of the uh, plow to push concrete left and right in front of the machine, that auger doesn't come into play. Well. It uses a metering gate technology that that bottom bar, this whole piece uh -huh. goes, goes up and down remotely to control how much concrete's being placed here for the paver. Because the biggest thing is, no matter how big a paver is, you don't want to bury it with concrete really high. You want to give it enough concrete to keep pressure in the compaction chamber and that it doesn't push it forward. Mm -hmm. You don't want a tsunami. A paver isn't pushing a wave. It's just consolidating the concrete and extruding it out. So by having a placer spreader, you can control the pressure on this machine. Uh, it helps with uh, smoother rides. but. I only have 15% of my customers use a machine like this. Yep. When you've been spraying cure out these nozzles all day long, you want to get rid of the cure that's in the lines because once, once it hits air, it starts to coagulate and it gets sticky and plugs things up. So the water tank is set at the right temperature to be sprayed through this spray bar to blow out and clean out all your tips. Oh. One thing we add to our machines is we run these rotary tips. So you can put different size spray nozzles based on what kind of cure you're using. Mm -hmm. So if you got a really thick cure, you're probably gonna need a wider nozzle. But even in that case, if you have a nozzle that plugs up while you're paving, you just turn the clock. It'll say 9505. It's a 95 degree fan, mm -hmm. and it's five gallons a minute spray rate at, at that pressure. Now, if you want more application rate, you can change that tip to an 08. Mm -hmm. So it's really how how much cure you want to put on the slab, how much cure the agency requests. And there's nothing wrong with curing once and then backing up and curing again. Because I've been on some jobs where we had the adequate rate based on the state's calculations, but the inspector didn't like the visual look. He thought it should be 100% reflective white. So we went back and sprayed it again. So there's no, no nothing prohibiting you to do that. But, but I think they've thought of everything with this machine. That 
that remote right there, and the operator can take it on either side of the machine and make the machine go forward and back without standing at the operator's platform because he has the remote in his hand. So it's a tethered remote. Okay, and uh, one thing you could change over What would yeah. I change? Yeah. Honestly? Maybe, maybe equip them with a different color stripe. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything, honestly, I paid with all of them. We got a very sound mold. This stainless on this machine uh -huh. is the one thing I wanted changed and and this is our new stainless our old stainless four months ago was thinner uh -huh. uh, and sometimes well it, it created we had to adjust it if we moved the machine we had to adjust it but we've eliminated that and we've gone to this more robust it's a full wear sole from the front of the mold to the back the stainless is all one piece and we have adjustments so you know, if you'd asked me that question, you know, four months ago, I would have said stainless, but yeah. this is our new, new setup. And, you know, a couple of things we did, we changed our mounts too on the machine. So we can, for transport, we can slide that mold back a foot. I mean, we can do a lot of things depending on how the operators want to run the machine. We can move the mold forward. We can move the mold back. Uh, like I said, a year ago, these ears were on this piece and the lug was on the machine got we said okay that's a, that's too much of a flex point we changed it we increased the size of the barrels we put the added gusset on the leg uh, changed the mold nothing on the plow or the super smoother changed the side tie bar inserters are the same uh, we have a new uh, center pta our old one was a cylinder that would attach to the top of them into the middle of the machine uh -huh. and help raise and assist. This is a gearbox driven. It's more precise. When with the hydraulic cylinder, you hit a switch, it opens a solenoid, and that cylinder goes up uh, uh, an, an amount, and you can, it's not finite, right? Mm -hmm. It's like as fast as you can get off the trigger, Correct. it's open closed. But this, because it's a gearbox and it turns slow, we hold the switch. We can get more precise. Uh, a vertical incline or, or, or crown into the machine. So uh, that that's new. The stainless is new. And you can see how thick that, that trailing pin is all the way back. It was half that thickness before. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, I see you. No problem. Vibrators. Mm -hmm. As you see that these vibrators, <coughs> it's positioned here like that. Uh, the distance we, uh, we this is around 40 centimeter distance we are keeping here, mm -hmm. and all individual variable controls in the top of the machine. Uh -huh. You can adjust. We have also 3D system. There are a lot of options. Uh -huh. And normally you have a string lines. There is a one line. Uh, machine has uh, some uh, sensor arms mm -hmm. touching the line mm -hmm. for no deadline during the day. Correct. But new technology, you see this, you can check, the, you see that. The GPS? Protect, yeah, the stations. Okay. Uh, machine is have a 3D system and uh, with the total station on the job site, it's following automatically uh, and uh, Playing 20 times in a second almost, mm -hmm. checking the position of the machine, the grading, the position. So we're paving in best millimeter accuracy. We're paving perfectly. Accurate. Okay. Awesome. This is 3D. So after the paver, we're gonna have the curing machine, yes, right? The curing machine. Yeah. We have several models you will see in our website. This is TC, TC me. Texturing and curing. Texturing and curing. Okay. Uh, 5600 we have like that. Uh -huh. Or we have a TC 600 only, which okay. has a one track here and one track here. Okay. A curing tank, we are uh, filling the curing compound in the tank. 
during your paving, you're sending that curing gecko part to the no, spraying nozzles mm -hmm. and it's spraying the ground. This machine is following the paver around 20 meters behind. 20 meters, yeah. okay. And you are spraying according to the condition is the hot weather. If you are paving in hot weather, you need to spray hard because you need to keep concrete from More the pressure. wind and hot. <coughs> Maybe in some projects like a Qatar in Dubai, which we had it before, mm -hmm. they have a curing uh, compound. Uh, we have a different model, it's transverse type. Okay? Not spraying nozzles. There's the one transverse type nozzles. It's moving like a texturing unit, the same uh -huh. unit. You are curing and coming, curing again. And curing 